So images are hard to grasp. They deceive, they evoke emotional responses in ways that um, words often cannot. So the question then becomes, how can we actually analyze an image? How can we make sense of the visual dimension of conflict that's surrounding us on a daily basis? Look, so it's not an easy task. I mean, images work in very complex ways at numerous levels. Um, um, so the, the challenge of analyzing them uh, is difficult. But there's meanwhile a lot of discussions on, on methods, methods about how to analyze images. Uh, for instance, Gillian Rose has written a very good accessible book on visual methodologies. She differentiates between three sites or three modalities through which images work. She says we need to understand the construction of an image, that is, you know, who took the photograph or the film and, and where, how did it end up on the front page of a newspaper. We need to analyze the content of an image, so what's in the image, you know, what, what do we see, what does that mean, what does that symbolize, and we need to analyze the impact of an image. So how does an image influence us, its audiences? So these three sites all require very different methodologies, very different ways of understanding images. So we brought along one image to look at and to analyze. It's an image of the aftermath of the Boxing Day tsunami of 2004. An image that appeared on the front page of the New York Times. An absolutely traumatic, terrible image depicting death on a big scale, trauma, suffering, pain, emotions. So we have to ask ourselves now, how do we analyze the construction, the content, and the impact of this image? Um, so can you talk us through this step by step? Yes, look, let me reiterate, because this is a really, really key issue. It's important methodologically, it's important for understanding the images. To have a proper, precise understanding of an image, we should walk through three steps. First, we should do an analysis of the production of an image. Second, we should do an analysis of the content of the image itself. And third, we should do an analysis of the actual impact of an image. That's right, Roland. And each of these three steps has its own methods and ways we need to go about doing analysis. So let us start with the first step, the production and construction of the image. So this essentially involves in asking, you know, how has the image been taken? Who's taken the image and how have they been taken? How do these images then go about reaching the public? What's the kind of selection processes in play that makes one image appear on the front page aside from a different image? And who makes these types of decisions? Was it the photographer? Was it the photo editor? Or was it the newspaper main editor and so on? And you've got to remember there are really thousands of images to choose from. So why one gets selected in opposition to another is really quite important. So after completing the first step, we move on to the content of the image. That's the second step. And here we can also find three different ways of doing it. One is what we call a simple compositional analysis. It involves just carefully looking at an image, looking at what is in there, describing the content, the contours, who we can see, the colors, uh, etc., etc. Second step would be to do a semiotic analysis. That would be to look at what kind of symbols are in there. What do they mean culturally, politically, uh, in terms of understanding what, what that entails? And the third step would be a so-called discourse analysis. Here we look at power relationships, who is depicted, who is not, and what that means for politics. So once you've done the second step, we need to move on to the third and final step, which is the analysis of the impact of the image which is also something that's intensely difficult to quantify. But we can try, there are some methods we can use to try and understand how it is that images actually matter. So this is how does an image affect a viewer or a kind of collective audience? What are the types of emotional responses that we as viewers enact when we encounter images? And we, here we look at what types of mixed methods can we use to measure and analyze this more precise impact of images? We could for instance, as Roald and I have in some of our work, we've done some survey experiments with social psychologists. We can also look at ethnography work or autoethnography work through how we actually as researchers read images ourselves. So these are in, in essence the three steps through which images can be understood and analysed. The production, the content and the impact of an image. 
So as we have seen, Emma and Roland have given us an overview of the tools that we need if we want to analyze images. And given that we're living in a visual age, and given that images evoke emotions and that they deceive, it's really important for us to gain the tools that help us understand the meaning of images.